my name is Kitia Tichuda from Graduate School of Media and Governance uh, of Keio University. Um, actually, my um, background is in uh, computer science. However, my graduate school is a multidisciplinary graduate school. I have to deal with uh, many complicated professors, uh, not only just engineers, but they are specialized in policy making, uh, international relations, or national security, and so on and so on. Um, uh, as she introduced the panelists, I have a few slides to uh, show you before we start the panel. Uh, we have uh, very distinguished professors and guests. Uh, once again, I will introduce each of you, each of them. Uh, Professor Tsuchiya from Keio University and uh, Dr. Kondo. She's a counselor for international strategy uh, from National Information Security Center, Reiko san. And then uh, Dr. Sa, uh, he's a former executive director of Korean Internet and Security Agency. Uh, right now, he's a visiting professor at Korea University. So, yeah. Um, before we start the panel, actually, I uh, tried to point out some of the issues. Sorry, slides are uh, written in Japanese. Uh, uh, related to uh, security, graph computing, and uh, big data. I will mention some of the things very quickly. Um, one of the challenges, actually, the risk in the cyberspace is getting bigger and then serious. So we have to deal with this serious risk. Everybody agree that we have to look into the many different type of threats. Okay. Uh, our, pa our panelists will go in detail, so I will skip some of the details. Uh, here's the slides for the um, cloud computing things. Actually, this is actually uh, um, comes from NIST report. These are so-called cloud reference architecture. Initially, when we start using a cloud, uh, as you know, these things, IaaS, PaaS, and then service as a software, software as a service, these layers, so-called service layers. But when we talk about more security issues or auditing issues, many people come up with a little bit more better reference architecture. Uh, I think many European com companies are trying to go with this kind of uh, architecture as well. Uh, not only these uh, so-called uh, cloud provider component, they have something called uh, cloud broker and then cloud auditor. So this is very nice in terms of improving the security in the cloud computing as well as the privacy protection issues. Okay, and then uh, one more slide for the cloud. Um, this is a list of high priority requirements offered by NIST. As you can see here, well, sorry, you need to in Japanese, some of the things is uh, Interoperability among the cloud. This is a one key aspect. We have to uh, achieve the healthy, secure interoperability among the heterogeneous cloud computing platforms. And then they mentioned something about the security standard. And also uh, very nice security solutions. Okay. Uh, last one is the related to the big data. Um, there was a discussion about the big data as well, but uh, I just tried to mention a few things. Uh, similar to the cloud, one of the technical challenges connecting the heterogeneous big data or huge data set in the outcome. This is a technical challenge we were facing. Uh, usually, another aspect is the open up uh, big data. Some company, for instance, like uh, e-commerce company, they are not willing to open up uh, data. If it's a government, sure, they will have uh, uh, open data for the um, end users. But uh, if it's a private sector, it's, it's a problem. It's the closed nature of the big data. Uh, so it's not easy to create a new business without open up uh, big data. I mean, the open means not the free of charge, but some kind of uh, data marketplace have to be created so that the uh, um, 
secondary use of uh, uh, big data or private data could be done in a safe fashion so that they can create a new business. This is the last slide actually for uh, interconnecting the big data from the different government sectors. This is a very challenging one. Uh, since we have a March 11th incident in two years ago, we have uh, actually uh, high demand to create uh, much better information infrastructures. Uh, we have a very huge information coming from uh, many different government sectors, uh, weather related information, traffic, river, uh, disaster related information, uh, hazard map in uh, local government, or uh, uh, many other uh, health information and so on. These things, uh, in addition to these things, we have uh, real-time uh, social network media, social media information like uh, Twitter or uh, Facebook kind of things, can be used as a sensor, soft sensor. And then these heterogeneous data have to be integrated together and then come up with some kind of uh, on-demand or real-time visualization to initiate the rescue team or trying to capture the current status of the disaster management. So, um, by saying this, uh, we had the basic question to the each panel, uh, what are the threat and what are the tools we need to manage and uh, ultimately defeat them. The second question is, uh, what is the situation in Japan and Korea? The third question is, uh, what best practice might be shared? So, okay, we have a two, uh, we have a following format of the panel. Um, round one, I took more than five minutes, sorry, <laughs> six minutes, sadly now. Um, each panelist will present his or her answer to these basic questions. Hopefully, additional issues uh, they will mention in 15 to uh, 20 minutes. And then after that, each presentation. Uh, we would like to start a discussion among the panelists, and then after that, we will open to the floor. Okay, by saying that, uh, I will pass to the Professor Tsuchiya.
But Bush administration, Bush administration says, no, 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 no. We cannot do that because so many communications over internet now. And after the 9 11, we have to watch the terrorist activities on the internet because 9 11 uh, terrorists was using the internet very much. So here's a new posture. So Bush is here in Europe. And it is continuing in, in, under the uh, Obama administration. So Obama, President Obama, was said to be a more uh, humanitarian, so he respected human privacy, uh, people's privacy, but he didn't actually. So he continued this project because it is very, very helpful to, uh, in the war against terrorism. So NSA is, saying, is said to be that they are intercepting 1.7 billion communications over the internet, and uh, it's equal to the 138 million books. So it's a big data. So people say this is a, a echelon system, but nothing more. Echelon is uh, for analog wireless communications. So now uh, it is a TSP, Terrorist Surveillance, Surveillance Program. So this is a digital and wired communication. And we, of course, the internet is, is included in this, in this program. And this is a, a map from the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union. So they are saying that, they are pointing out that NSA is here in Maryland, in the state of Maryland. And they are collecting a lot of net, uh, communications from many places. They are wiretapping Atlantic, uh, Atlantic cables, they are wiretapping Pacific cables. So, and this is a photo of a new NSA facility in the state of Utah. Salt Lake City is hosting this huge data center. So NSA is collecting big data. And this is happening in the United Kingdom too. So GCHQ, Government Communication Headquarters, is an uh, intelligence bureau of the United Kingdom. So they are collecting information from Twitter, from Facebook, and other social media. So this kind of thing is happening all over the world. So these intelligence agencies are dealing with big data. So they are analyzing big data. They are monitoring big data. So foreign affairs, the latest uh, issue in foreign affairs is talking about uh, the right of big data. So uh, also one of the also Kenneth Kuke is my friend. He's a very good friend of mine. So he's saying simply knowing that something is likely to occur. So coincidence or co-occurrence is more important than understanding exactly why. So we don't have to think about why something is happening. We have to know when it's happening, when terrorist uh, activity, terrorism will happen. That's an important thing. We should not think the reason at first. We have to think the reason later, but it's not important at first. So first response is quite important. And he, so uh, also the uh, article is saying that we should not talk about some data. We should speak about all the data. So big data is available now. And um, all the data is not clean. So we, when we use the statistics, we have to clean the data. But all the data means messy data. And the important thing is not causation. It's a, a correlation is more important. We want to know what's happening when. This is important, they say. And the intelligence agency is doing these same things. So in the age of big data, uh, we have to think about hostile parties, hostile terrorists, can send and create, uh, receive messages in the cloud of big data. And we have to develop our capabilities to wire up monitor these malicious communications over the internet. So President Obama uh, is saying that we have to change the operational fields. This is a famous thing. So our, our operational fields used to be land, sea, and air. But the fourth domain, fourth of, uh, operation uh, field is outer space. And the final one, fifth one, is cyberspace. Cyberspace is becoming operational field now. 
it means a battlefield. So cyberspace is a kind of a uh, war place. And we are saying that this is a cool war. It's not cold war anymore. Because it is a little bit warmer than cold war. And we are using uh, smart technology. That's a cruel war. It's happening all over the world now. And people say we have to protect global commons. Yeah, we have a global commons. Uh, I don't like the idea of global commons, actually. I don't like that. So, what is global commons? So, Mr. Taniwaki, I think he left already, but so he told us that uh, internet is cross border, transnational. Yeah, it's true. But actually, internet is aggregation of communication devices, communication channels, and storage devices. It's true, isn't it? Yeah. So I have iPhone here. It's not part of global phones. This is mine. You are only a laptop. This is yours. That is yours. So they are not part of your global commons. Global commons is just an obligation of uh, devices. So people say internet is a cloud, but it's not cloud. It's a kind of marketing technology, marketing world. This is not cloud. So this is you. This is Google's data center. So we can use these servers for free, but still, Google is owning these servers, right? Somebody is owning these devices. And this is internet too, under, underground. So cable are underground everywhere, and we have to dig uh, holes to bury pipes on the street side. And we have to hook uh, optic fibers on the poles of the street. This is internet. Can we say this is a global commons? And the most important thing is an uh, undersea cable, submarine cable. So uh, Japan is an island country, so we are dependent on uh, undersea cables, submarine cables. International, 90, more than 95% of international communications coming through and going through submarine cables in Japan. Is it possible to cut submarine cable? Terrorists can cut submarine cable. I was always worrying, worrying about it. So people say it's stupid, it's very difficult, you cannot do that. But it happened in Egypt, coast of Cairo. Three men were captured while cutting the cable in the sea. It happened, and it's happening. So, um, global commons is just some aggregation of interconnected physical devices. It's a vulnerable space. It's very, very vulnerable. And how do we protect it? That's our problem. So, um, Foreign Minister Gaber of the uh, uh, Demo Democratic Party, almost one year ago, he joined the uh, government meeting and told us, basically, current international laws can be applicable to cyberspace. So I was somehow surprised what he said. Is it possible? So people were thinking that cyberspace is a new domain, new area. So we have to think in other ways. So existing laws cannot be applicable. But he told us so. And I thought, what does it mean? This is my idea. This is not a government idea. So I hope the Article 84 of the Civil Defense Force Act popped up in my mind. So it is defining the airspace in Canada. It is a intrusion into airspace, a territorial air in every country. So, um, is it possible to think about invasion of cyberspace? We can define the uh, sovereignty over cyberspace. So, again, so we are dependent on submarine cable. Here are many, many uh, landing cable stations. So, each country has almost a few landing stations. In Japan's case, Tokyo, so almost Chiba, Chiba and Shima are uh, concentrated place. We could set up a monitor to stop malicious communications from the overseas. It might be possible, I'm thinking. So, if we think about data or traffic, it's global, it's transnational, as Mr. Tanya said. But if we think about the facilities, we can define sovereignty inside the space. So inside 
uh, or uh, cable landing station, we can use sovereignty of Japanese government, right? So you are living here, or maybe you are visiting here, and you have a maybe foreign citizenship, but you have to obey Japanese law inside Japan, in the Japanese territory. So we can use it uh, sovereignty over the cyberspace, over the internet too. So, uh, but airspace incursion is somehow difficult uh, concept, legal concept, because uh, if somebody, so unnoticed, uh, unknown airplane is coming to Japanese territory, we have to shoot it down. It's quite a um, dangerous idea. But we have the uh, idea of invasion of territorial waters. It's Ryokai Shimpan in Japanese. So Ryoku Shimpan is, uh, airspace incursion is Ryoku Shimpan. It's, they are very, very different ideas actually in legal terms. Because airspace doesn't allow innocent passage. But waters sometimes allows innocent passage. Innocent passage, what does it mean? So if submarine uh, ships, uh, uh, or any ships, can go through the territorial waters of Japan, it goes straight to the destination. It's innocent passage. But if ships stop here, or go S type of things, I don't know how to say it in English, but so if a uh, stop or something can like, do surveillance or something like that, it's uh, not innocent. So it's an uh, illegal uh, passing. So internet is based on innocent passage of traffic, innocent passage of communication, right? So that is the wonderful part, wonderful element of the internet. So we are allowing innocent passage of email and other communications. But we have to think about it. If the communication is malicious, if communication is very bad, we should be able to stop it. That's my point. And sovereignty in cyberspace is a new idea and an old idea. So now a tally manual, I should bring it, but I couldn't. Uh, so uh, uh, Estonian government set up a CCDCOE in Estonia, so tally. So tally manual was published last month, and it is very, very insightful. So they are talking about sovereignty in uh, rule number one. So the Tali Mania has 95 rules, and the first one is about sovereignty. So sovereignty is uh, in the discussion of uh, cyber security now. And last week, um, a Japanese government published uh, this new cyber security. And the, in the debate to draft it, so uh, Professor Tokura was advisor to the government, and I am a member of the drafting team. And Professor Jim Rai, so my colleague, so my boss, was also there. So we are uh, six members from the private sector. And well, what is me, so the other one is Professor Murai. And we were always talking about it. So um, I know global connection is everything in China. So this is the most important part in the internet, cyberspace protection. But I want to say we have to stop not just attacks, but communications. So we have to think about Japan, we have to think about South Korea, the Republic of Korea, we have to think about the United States, the protection of each country. So I am kind of an uh, internet nationalist. And Professor Jim Lai is always internet communitarian. I don't want to say internet communist, but it's, it's kind of internet <laughs> So in the government meetings, I'm always saying we have to see national security. National security is very important. So Professor Tobila was somehow annoyed. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then Professor Jim Lai always said, no, 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 the internet is global. We have to think about the global internet policy. But I'm saying that this is a government meeting, so we have to think about Japanese national no cyber security policy, but he says always, so global, 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 so we are trying to be, so I'm kind of a right-wing person, and he's a left-wing person. So as Mr. Tanya said, so Japanese people like the middle, Chuyo, he loves Chuyo. So I think Kondo-san chose his middle between Lai and me, so I don't know. But we published this um, uh, 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 strategy anyway. So this is my last slide. So cyber security, is not only defense and offense and uh, 
exploitation uh, includes exploitation is uh, finding vulnerabilities in someone else's systems. So uh, we are not, Japan is not allowed to attack somebody. Well, we are a defense country, defense oriented country. But we have to think about how to protect us. And maybe Republic of Korea is a good partner for us. So I'm thinking that uh, uh, Seoul Conference on Cyberspace this fall, this October, should be a very important step for us to make a further mm -hmm. cooperation. So uh, I'm thinking that it's an age of big data. What the Japanese government can do to deal with big data or cybersecurity? Um, maybe you don't like me, so you don't like my idea, but I want to raise it. Discussion. So, thank you so much. I stop here.